Greetings. Welcome to ISC220, Information Storage and Retrieval. Uh, today we're going to do a course overview, and um, we're going to figure out what this is all about. So, first we'll talk about information retrieval generally. Then we'll walk through a very stupid Google search um, that can really explain, or at least paint the picture of why this is so interesting to work with. Uh, we'll do a little toy example of a system working to create a retrieval system. And I'll cover some of the stuff from the syllabus in the course agenda. So first, let's talk about information retrieval in a general sense. There's a ton of information in the world, right? We live in the information age um, and you know the internet shows no signs of stopping. In fact, data is becoming the most urgent resource in, in the world. So what is our way of interacting with all of that data? You might not think about it like this, but you do this every single day. Um, you know, every time you search anything, uh, you are using something called an information retrieval system, which is a system that will convert an information need from the user combined with a collection of documents of data out there in the world into some kind of information access for that user, right? Uh, and there are two major camps for information access in a general sense. There's structured information and there's unstructured information. Um, this course is primarily about the latter, but let's talk about what, what the former is. So structured data is anything that is really well-organized information that's already been curated into one place, right? Um, any database management system that you might use, uh, any, you know, MySQL, all these friendly tools, um, this is not what we're focusing on here because these are the kinds of information that someone has already put a lot of work into putting together, building up, right? Uh, all the information is easily categorized. It's carefully, it's been carefully tended to. Um, and really retrieval in these systems is just a matter of using the correct syntax for building a query, right? Building the right query gives you what you want out of a database. That's great. This is super useful stuff. You know, select star from blah, 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 blah. You get all these rows, MySQL, right? But in these systems, the hard part's already done, right? Somebody has already chopped through all the information and made a certain kind of structured sense of it. No, what we're focusing on in this class is building a system to retrieve unstructured data. So... Once again, you know, the, the information retrieval system is the kind of thing that converts an information need into information access. Databases do that quite well for structured data, but for unstructured data, we got to do a little bit more work. And that is the interesting work that we will be focusing on in this class. So let's look at unstructured data. Out there, the things that you consume from the internet on a given day are all kinds of stuff, right? You are pulling in video, you're pulling in website, um, like just web pages. You're, you're looking at different documents. You are listening to music, right? There's a huge variety of information out there. Um, and it's, it's often in these f formats that make sense to us, right? That we, we like the experience of reading some article or the experience of listening to something. But in terms of the way the data is structured, it's kind of, it's not very neat, right? Uh, a, a given article could be four paragraphs or it could be 30, right? And, and there's all kinds of information. There's natural language in all of this. There's, there's audio data, all, all, these, all these things that are structured to humans, but not especially structured to a machine. And the relationships between these data aren't especially clear. Um, you know, you, you don't always know what to expect from a given file, you know, whether it's text or, or um, video or, or all, all the above. So this is where we enter with information retrieval systems. So 
Now, going forward, it's important to backtrack slightly in this and say, we are certainly going to make use of the semi-structured nature of a lot of this data. You know, all data that you encounter in the world, web pages, music files, images, all this stuff, they have some structure to them. You know, they have a, a, a page always has a title. Uh, and it always has an author that you could maybe make use of that information. It has different headers and paragraphs and summaries and all these things. Um, so a lot of the course will focus on trying to solve the more difficult and basic problems of, of the kind of the unstructured data involved. But we'll also pick up some ideas on how we can make use of actual structure that already does exist in these things, right? So, okay. Let's walk through a little example of how one might make use of uh, information retrieval. So let's say we encounter a big old pile of books and, you know, what, whatever. This is, this is just a huge scattered pile of these documents, right? And my information is, need is I want to learn about cats, okay? How do we do this just on our own? Uh, the information need is, I want to learn about cats. The information retrieval system that we have at our disposal is just our human brain, eyes, hands, and feet. How do we get the relevant information out of this stack of books? Bad news is we're going to have to just look. There's no structure to it. How could we even begin? We don't know where to look. We can start looking at titles, which is nice, but oof, that's still, there's no relationship between them. There's no system in place to help us do this job. We just have to brute force look at each book. That's nothing. That's terrible. <laughs> so instead, let's do the same task. What if we had at our, at our disposal the library Dewey Decimal System for this big old set of books. We still have the same information need. I want to learn about cats, right? But we have this system in place in between us and the, the huge variety of documents that says, hey, uh, there, there is a method through which you can access this information. So if the need is I want to learn about cats, but now our information retrieval system is we still have our human brain, eyes, hands, and feet, but we also have this well-organized lookup table known as the Dewey Decimal System. Well, shoot, now we can find all kinds of interesting stuff. We know the Dewey Decimal System has access to both like children's literature and biology textbooks and, and all this stuff. We can actually start on, our, on satisfying our information need. So this illustrates the idea that Unstructured data is really hard to just manually brute force search through. We are typically inclined to create some kind of system to help us figure out what's going on in this big old pile, right? So this course is aimed at understanding how to automate and scale those systems up into capturing something as big as, say, the internet. So this should sound familiar. Um, the, the, the secret byline of this, of all this, is we're learning about search engines and how they work. So let me do another silly illustration. Um, this is a very stupid Google search success story I once had. So once upon a time, I was just kind of lazing around in grad school. And I had one of those moments, you know, the moments where you flub the entire thing, you lose the plot completely. You're like, I, who is that? I, there was a singer who I could not remember the name of. Um, I knew her songs, I knew, I knew who she was. I didn't know her name, the, the literal name of this person. Uh, so I can remember a few things about her. She was a popular musician. Um, she was fond of beehive hairdos. Uh, I knew she had recently died, and, and like I said, I could I could hum some of her tunes. It's not really text data, but it's something. I also couldn't really remember her lyrics either, which would have been much faster, right? But I couldn't get her name. 
So this is an example of my human information retrieval system screwing the pooch. It did a bad job. Uh, it, I, I just couldn't find it. So I turned to Google. And how might you try to find this information from Google? Hmm. Uh, to start, you might think, hmm, lyrics. Well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think of any lyrics. I couldn't really nail any of them down. Um, maybe, maybe you would have said recent deaths musicians. Hmm. Hmm. That's probably a good place to start, but nah, this was one of those times where I was kind of shooting from the hip. Look at this. I typed beehive sadness. That's not a great query. That's not even close to talking about singers. That's not close to talking about music or heroin overdoses or anything. This was about beehive sadness. And let me tell you, now this is a reenactment, but this was actually enough for Google behind a couple of articles about colony collapse disorder. I got her. Amy Winehouse, British soul singer, dies at 27. I got her name. Did I do good? Well, Google certainly helped me. What the hell happened? How did I actually get the information I was looking for with that utter garbage search term? Well, there's a lot of things that go into a search, right? There's a lot of information that is associated with a document. In this case, I started with the information need was the singer's name. The query I generated was beehive sadness. The information retrieval system was Google and the relevant information was Amy Winehouse. There she is. How did this happen? Well, there's a lot of wizardry in Google's search systems. They, they have a lot of multiple layers of indexing and all kinds of powerful stuff going on. But at a basic level, some of the information I used happened to be most closely connected in documents that mentioned both terms, that had associations with both terms, that connected the, these ideas together in one place, leading the allowing Google to find it based on these two terms. Now, Google's got a lot of wizardry going on. I mean, for one thing, you can see uh, it, it did, in, in less than a second, it found 14 million results for this super underspecified query and found a ton of matching articles, ranked them for relevance, and somehow managed to pop it up on my screen in, again, less than a second. So, in general, Google is not doing anything totally magical. I use the term wizardry here, but... It's important not to not to consider it that way. It's just a system. It's just a system that is pulling in and chopping up information in a way to, to make it the most presentable or rather searchable system that it can so that its users can make sense of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little video from Matt from Google Google's Webmasters group uh, and we're going to join him sort of midstream, but he's going to describe the indexing process. So take it away, Matt. Okay. I have crawled a large fraction of the web, and within that, that web, you have, for example, one document. And indexing is basically taking things in word order. Uh, well, let's just work through an example. Suppose you say Katy Perry, right? In a document, Katy Perry appears right next to each other. But what you want in an index is how which documents does the word Katie appear in and which documents does the word Perry appear in. So you might say Katie appears in documents 1 and 2 and 89 and 555 and uh, 789. And Perry might appear in documents number 2 and 8 and 73 and 555 and 1000. 
And so the whole process of doing the index is reversing so that instead of having the documents in word order, you have the words and they have it in document order. So it's okay, these are all the documents that a word appears in. Now when some come, someone comes to Google and they type in Katy Perry, you, you wanna say, okay, what documents might match Katy Perry? Well, document one has Katy, but it doesn't have Perry, so it's out. Document number two has both Katy and Perry, so that's a possibility. Document eight has Perry, but not Katy. 89 and 73 are out because they don't have the right combination of words. 555 has both Katy and Perry, and then these two are also out. And so when someone comes to Google and they type in Chicken Little, Britney Spears, Matt Cutts, Katy Perry, whatever it is, we find the documents that we believe have those words, either on the page or maybe in backlinks in anchor text pointing to that document. Once you've done what's called document selection, you try to figure out how should you rank those. And that's really tricky. We use PageRank as well as over 200 other factors in our rankings to try to say, okay, maybe this document is really authoritative. It has a lot of reputation because it has a lot of page rank, but it only has the word Perry once and it just happens to have the word Katie somewhere else on the page. Whereas here's a document that has the word Katie and Perry right next to each other, so there's proximity, and it's got a lot of reputation. It's got a, links point, a lot of links pointing to it. So we try to balance that off. You wanna find reputable do documents that are also about what the user typed in. And that's kind of the secret sauce, trying to figure out a way to combine those 200 different ranking signals in order to find the most relevant document. So at any given time, hundreds of millions of times a day, Someone comes to Google, we try to find the closest data center to them, they type in something like Katy Perry, we send that query out to hundreds of different machines all at once, which look through their little tiny fraction of the web that we've indexed, and we find, okay, these are the documents that we think best match. All those machines return their matches, and, and we sort of say, okay, what's the creme de la creme? What's the needle in the haystack? What's the best page that matches this query across our entire index? And then we take that page and we try to show it with a useful snippet. So you show the keywords in the context of the document and you get it all back in under half a second. So that's probably about as long as we can go on without uh, straining YouTube, but um, that just gives you a little bit of a feel about how the crawling system works, how we index documents, how things get returned in under half a second through that massive parallelization. I hope that helps. And uh, if you wanna know more, there's a whole bunch of articles and, and academic papers about Google and PageRank and how Google works. Uh, but you can also apply to, you know, there's uh, jobs at google.com, I think, or google.com slash jobs, if you're interested in learning a lot more about how search engines work. Okay, thanks very much. So, we're not gonna do everything that he's mentioned here, but that core concept of turning documents, kind of flipping their word to document pairing on its head and creating lists of where documents live uh, and, and where terms live within those documents, that's core. So um, we will learn some things about web crawling and, and other such things, but we won't necessarily be building those ourselves. So we're not gonna recreate Google, right? Uh, because Google has infinite processing power and time, financial resources, proprietary tricks, but we're gonna learn all these basic tools to make our own system. So let's take another detour into walking through one of these systems. It's kind of a toy example of how they work. So remember, this, will, this is gonna come up a lot. I'm gonna reuse this same structure a lot because it is the key. Um, you never, never forget that you are taking two things using a system to combine them and get one thing out the other end. Those two things are the information need, all of the unstructured data, and then into the information retrieval system and out to the results page. So let's look at what might we have in an unstructured, a set of unstructured data that we want to search. Uh, so here's a very small collection. Um, there's three documents in it, document one, here are some words, document two, look, some more words, document three, wow, so many words. So documents are harvested somehow into a collection. 
this is a set of information that you plan to chop up in, in these useful ways to turn into indexes. Um, the documents are parsed into tokens first. So the punctuation is removed, you make them lowercase, you combine phrases, um, you see st similar words stacked together. So these documents will be chopped up something like this. Here are some words, look some more words. Wow, so many words. What you then do is you, for each term that exists, you're gonna make a note of which documents it appears in. So this would be our index. This is the index for this collection of documents. We've, I've uh, alphabetized them, which is quite useful, but generally speaking, this is a little sort of a hash table. It is, here's a bunch of, here's R, that occurs in document one, right? Uh, document two, three, okay, some and words, those appear in multiple documents, that's useful. Um, so that helps us to say, if I'm looking for the word words, then, I'm gonna get all three of those documents in the search. But if I'm looking for the word R, I'm only gonna get the first document, right? So this index is key. This is the, the key piece of the puzzle throughout the entire course. Um, how we build them, how we search them, how we manage them, we'll get into all that. I promise you there's a lot. So, um, but so what, what we start with is we build a collection of documents and we split them up into tokens, and then we create a searchable index of terms. Forgive my cute uh, structuring of this, but okay. So that's that's how we will chop up collections of information of this unstructured data. Now let's talk about a, the information need, right? Um, the user will convert their information need into some kind of query, just like I did with Beehive sadness, right? Um, the idea is, hopefully, your system is robust enough to take even the crummiest, stupidest query and get the user close to the destination of the kinds of things they want to see. Um, so you might take small words, another bad job by brain. But we have systems, when we'll talk about ways that you can implement error checking. So you could say, oh, uh, that first word is actually closest to sum, so we'll just substitute sum. And then we split the query up into terms, sum and words, right? These are two terms. So now we'll check them against the index and we're gonna figure out which things match. Sum has documents one and two, words has documents one, two, and three. Two of those documents are gonna work. We compare them one bit at a time, there's our results. So we've now taken a user-generated query, we corrected some of its errors, and we searched the index. And we get out the other side, matches found. Now finally on the results page, we'll say, okay, here's the two documents that we found. We're going to rank them by relevance. Now there's a lot of ways to do this, but one very simple one is, how far apart are my words in the document? In the first document, sum and words, there's space between them. Uh, there's, there's a distance of one. In the second document though, or document one, sorry. So document two has a distance of one between our words. Document one has no distance. So here we're using proximity of terms to rank which one of these is the most relevant search result. Um, but we can use all kinds of information, right? There's metadata, maybe the title is more important than the body text of a, of a document. Um, there's the edit distance of, of how exact, you know, what exactly this, these pages, the exact contents are like. We can compare them at a vector level, which we'll get into, all interesting stuff. Um, and the idea is that from, from here now, we've, we found a way to rank the documents. Now we will generate snippets to show why a page was selected, right? Or we, we, have, uh, we can optionally do this, but a good search engine will show you, hey, this, this is where uh, in the document your search terms came up, whereas in document two, there's some space. So finally, after we've got the matches found, we sort by the best match, and that is our information retrieval system.
let me go back real quick to, to that. Um, yeah, so this is a, a little cutesy diagram, um, but it, I hope it illustrates the basic idea. We have two processes. We have getting our unstructured data into an index that's usable, and then processing user queries through that index to get the search results that we want. So again, that is the overall structure. Um, food for thought is, you know, think about the num sheer number of these kinds of things that you use, you know, uh, you, you might, you might not think of it like this, but YouTube is unstructured data that is highly searchable. Um, you also have like the search bar on your phone versus you can speak into Siri or your Google assistant, right? Um, Spotify, also music, you know, we, we have all kinds of search engines in our lives that we use every single day. So the idea is we're going to understand these systems a whole lot better by the end of the course, and we'll be able to make a rudimentary, I, I promise, not, <laughs> we're not going to shoot for the moon with these things, but you will have a system that is fully searchable. So let's talk uh, syllabus type stuff. Uh, on our course agenda. So what what we're we doing here, I'm going to introduce a lot of concepts about unstructured information retrieval systems. We're not going to implement all of those concepts. Some I just want you to be aware of. Um, but a lot of this stuff we will actually build one piece at a time over the course of several programming assignments. Um, and you know, the, I, they'll be guided. I'll be showing you how they work and how roughly how to do them. Um, you know, we're, we're going to try to build a working information retrieval system one bit at a time. We're going to program it. We're going to use the growing, you know, increasingly standard um, information science department uh, programming set of JavaScript and a little bit of HTML and CSS. Uh, you won't, I'll be giving you pretty much pre-structured template files with the HTML and CSS all figured out. You'll be responsible for the JavaScript writing the code. It actually does the thing. Now, I'll, again, I'll be showing you a lot of how these things work, so it won't be any major mystery about how to actually program them. But um, it, an example of a, of a particular thing that might be the topic of one assignment is write the code that chops a string up into normalized tokens. We'll talk through these things as they come, uh, but I'll tell you, these, this isn't, these aren't especially complex but you might not be familiar with these things. So every individual piece will be something straightforward to get your head around and show you how it works in an actual programmed applied setting. And then also I will upload video demos of each segment. So we'll walk through the concepts, show you how it works, all that good stuff. Um, just a side note, uh, everybody, the prerequisite for this class is uh, ISC 250 or CSC 241, I believe. And what that amounts to is these are, you You need to have your basic understanding of just like what programming is, right? But you don't necessarily need to have like a strong grip of all the theories of how programming works and stuff. Again, I'll be walking through most of this stuff with you. What you'll want to focus on during these is, okay, how does this work? Why does this work? All that kind of stuff. Now it's time to scare you. So I'm going to show you a system map. Uh, this is also available on my website of the information system we covered last semester. Brace yourself. It's big. Boom. So that's a lot of stuff. Holy crap. Are we really going to learn all this? Yeah, actually. But it's not as many things as you might think, right? If we cover in one or two lectures each little bulb on this chart, you start to understand how it comes together. So, and key, remember, I said that the structure will remain the same. Up at the top left, the information need from the user. Up at the top right, the unstructured data that we will chop up into indexes. You can sort of see an indexing process there in the middle. Uh, and by the end, you get to the results page. We'll probably, I'll probably rebuild another one of these to cover this explicit stuff that we cover in the course that I'll, I'll deliver as we go. 
this is just sort of where all, all the frilly ends and pieces we went to last semester. Um, so we might not hit all of these, but we're going to get through most of them. And by the end, you'll be able to build this. In fact, you will have built it. Just at the end, we'll staple it all together and show you how it works. So, yeah. Um, yeah I'm reiterating what I said last slide. So, last bit, um, the final exam. Uh, this will also be asynchronous. It'll be during finals week. I'll give you plenty of time during that week. Typically, the, I do, the way I do exams on Blackboard is you can start it any time you want during a specific time frame, but you only have some number of hours to finish it. Um, it will contain questions from the lecture quizzes, so things you've already seen before. It'll contain ideas from the pro programming assignments, and it'll also kind of test your knowledge of the overall structure, something along the lines of that system map, a little less dense than the full map. But the idea is you'll, you'll, you'll know how these things go together, all in service of, you know, helping you understand how information moves around, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, but also in, in the world as you, as you continue forward. So to review, there's a ton of unstructured data in the world and presents this challenge of how can we programmatically search it without just doing it by brute force. Um, you know, commercial products like Google are super powerful, um, you know, with even with their very clever algorithms, even my very silly information needs can be fulfilled. Um, but we're going to create our own pretty f simple search system that does it, right? Does it all. So it won't be good necessarily, but it will do all the pieces and it'll do them adequately. So, okay, that's it. Uh, every lecture, I'm going to leave you with a final thought, maybe to spark a little discussion. So this time, count the number of things that you use in your everyday life that might be considered information retrieval systems. The hint is that, you know, a lot of your apps on your phone or your computer will probably incorporate something that helps you retrieve some subset of information out of a huge pile of information. Um, but count all the ones you can think of. Make a note. We'll see if we, see if we talk about it. All right, take care.